about nothing. It's me, your boy, the hottest dude in the podcast game, Sebastian Canelli. And as always, per usual, we have the cute boy here himself, Robbie Boy. Robbie, say hello to beautiful people. Beautiful people, what is going on? Nice. Um, beautiful people, I have a show this Saturday. I would love if you could attend the show uh, and support. It's a lot of fun. I read this letter that I wrote. I've talked about it a few times here, but I read this letter that I wrote or book that I wrote, my ex-girlfriend, in 2011 that kind of goes through my senior year drinking for the first time going on the disney trip going to wildwood prom going to college i mean it's was supposed to be a sweet thing that i wrote i thought it was like sweet Mm -hmm. when i wrote it um and we've talked about it on the podcast i feel like prior to me receiving it again um and if you would have been like what's the sweetest thing you've ever done for someone a, a year ago I would have been like, I wrote this really long book for my ex-girlfriend about like our first year together for Christmas or whatever. Um, and I got it back and it's like, it's a story about me nice. that I gave her. Self-involved. Very self-centered. Jay Cornell and Patrick Keene are doing the show. They're past guests of the pod. And then also Kelly Quinn and Steph Leschek. I'm excited about that. Um, it's going to be fun. It's the only time I'm doing the show on a weekend. Uh, so if you could have made the last one come out, if you went to the last one and had a good time, and you have friends that live in New York that you think they would like it, please let them know. Um, but no, it's a lot of fun. I'm very proud of it. A lot of my friends are like, this is my favorite show that you've done. Um, maybe because they've like lived some of it, but it was fun. It was a lot of fun, and I'm super excited about it. So if you're around this Saturday, March 30th at 7.30 p.m., please come out to the show. Um, I'm very excited. Yeah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. All right, um, and I might be sniffling a little bit this episode. Uh, I got a little sniffles. Okay, that's okay. Sure, people could deal with deal with that. It's sniffle season. That's what it is. It is the end of March, beginning of April. We're coming into it, right. This is the time sniffles are real. I'm a lip. My nose is a little red. Did you notice? I mean, everything's red. We have a, a pink light that shines on our faces. But you've seen me outside the room. Not re- it's not that much redder than the rest of your face. So you have rosy so, cheeks. A little support. All yeah. right, I'm sorry. Do, do, I, I, rosy <laughs> cheeks. Don't describe it. You have rosy cheeks and the same. that's the same color as your nose. It's oh, not. So your whole face oh, is just a little God, red. Rosy cheeks. With the pink light. It's I'm just a little red. away from being a Santa Claus. <laughs> ah, I mean. My nose. So you're got- six inches. Six inches. You're six, in- like you're saying you're an inch away. You're six inches away. That feels like a penis reference. No, it's not a penis reference. It feels like I know. Penis. It feels like it. You're six small adjustments to being a Santa Claus. You're not one. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm six small adjustments. You're six small things Thank away you. from being a Santa Claus. Probably the magical powers would be a big one. No, the beard. I mean, the- oh, the beard. <laughs> I actually beard, think the I've old. Been the beard. No, no, no. You don't have a Santa beard. No, no. But maybe one day. You probably need your voice a few octaves lower. Now you're insulting <laughs> me. Now, not you only didn't know I can turn it into I an didn't insult. Know that, that I'm not Santa Claus because I <laughs> I don't know. show up. Well, you would have to be a lot kinder, you know. No, like, no, no. You're kind not, enough. People would have to actively not hate you. Yeah, um, no, 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 no. That's all good. That's Claus. good. That's good. Um, you need to own property. Uh, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you would have to have a career people know about. All right, maybe you're a few feet away. <laughs> you, you would have to have a, a visibility and and rec- you would have to be recognizable <laughs> to a, a general population. All right, yeah. Rather than you're pretty a far. <laughs> You're pretty far from Santa. <laughs> well, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I'm like not Santa in the worst ways. My bad. You'd have to be in a committed relationship with someone who loves you. You would have to be. <laughs> yeah. You All right. You're miles away from being Santa Claus. You would have to have an LLC that's successful. <laughs> you're miles away from being Santa Claus. Okay. Sorry. No, no. It's good. It's good to know your goals. It's good to know. Uh, it's good to know how you're failing and how you're succeeding. Uh, thank you, Rob. What no, you? it's fine. No, keep me humble. Keep me humble. I'm okay. no Santa Claus. You're not Santa yet. Hey, I'm no Santa, right? Um, and no, no one often is, but I do have. Um, it is like that March, April. That's the allergy season. Yes, and I want to say this: nothing makes me feel more like a monster than having allergies. Suddenly, 
The outside is beautiful. And what does it do to my body? I physically am repelled from it. Yeah. It makes me ill. Beauty makes me sick. Come look at the flowers. I can't go outside. If the sun sees me, if the beauty enters me, I'll feel ill. Oh, what is that? My eyes are shutting from the beautiful nature that's around me. Oh, come have a picnic. I can't. My eyes will tear and I'll sneeze mucus all over you. I truly feel like a monster. Yeah, it's hard. I used to not be able I wouldn't be able to open my eyes. Nothing. My eyes would swell shut. I see a beautiful day. And I day. already look like. You look freaky. Yeah, I'm already unathletic. I already have bifocal transition lens glasses on and now i just can't see out of them to walk out to walk outside to for someone to be like it's beautiful let's meet at the park and you to go my body can't handle that yeah that's a sad living no it was it's crazy everyone hopes for the beautiful days i fear them yeah <laughs> i fear them Claritin doesn't help no because i do Claritin i never D, and yeah then all I, of a sudden i'm getting a fucking my i feel like i'm on speed really the closest I've ever been to passing out was once I took Cloud and D drank a cold brew and didn't eat. Oh wow! I had to leave a room. Oh wow! And this is a guy who who's done the same coke as Chris Angel. Of course. And I'll say Cloud and D. It's harder. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, it never worked for me. Zyrtec never. I never had an allergy you medicine that genuinely worked. No, one thing works. What saying inside? Benadryl. Oh. And it just puts you to sleep. It puts you to sleep. Yeah. And what? Why does it work? Because you go to bed. You have to stay inside. Yeah. Have you ever – so, like, the choices are either be physically repelled by beautiful nature. Yes. Have your body be a magnet, f- physically ill. It's like like sunshine and flowers is my kryptonite. It is uh, – that is sad. It's truly – it makes me feel like the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> I feel like I'm in my ta- – like the beast. Yeah. A lot of times, it's if it's all – like, if I were to go to the Brooklyn Botanic Garden, I would – Pretty, I would put up with it, but growing up, it would just be like recess would make you turn into a monster or like the shitty park by my parents' house. And I would just be like, it's not worth it. Do you know what it's like to go meet a bunch of people and they're having a fun day and you walk? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Who's got a white claw? <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't. I actually can't drink any. I'm on so yeah. many pills. <laughs> Just rubbing your face, yeah, and, and you start rubbing. If your allergies are bad, you stop rubbing with your fingers and you start rubbing with your wrists. Oh yeah, yeah, you have. To. When you start rubbing with your wrists, no one can make you. you no, know, I don't even start with the fingers. It's just from it's the wrist from the beginning. And rubbing, and you need your, to get to the center of your brain. You're like your brain squeaks. Rubbing your eye with the wrist, like this. Yeah, you truly look like you suffer from many issues. I mean, I. A long time, I just have general allergies, like a lot. Like I remember one time I went to the allergist, <laughs> and you're not supposed to I love take. You said a lot. Like I'm allergic. Like so, you're not supposed to take fucking allergy medicine uh-huh. within a certain amount of days before you go to the allergist. Yeah. And I accidentally did that, and so they do the back test. Have you done the back test? No. Nah. Uh, so they'll put like forty. I know what it is. Yeah, so they do all the shit on I'm your back, and I, I, they were like, "Oh, you took the allergy medicine." After I did that, they were like, "Oh, we can't." These results aren't valid. So then they fucking, and I'm afraid of needles. They did the, they injected like 20 different things on my arms with fucking this needle, whatever. And almost every single one caused me to have a allergic reaction. I'm allergic to cats, dogs, ragweed, fu- like almost everything that the general people are allergic to. Um, general public. General public is allergic to, I'm allergic to. So I always, all year I have some shit going on, dust, whatever. I know, I'm so... Like- I a big like a big thing that I would always do, especially in college, is I'm just like scratching my nose a lot like I this don't and do making this face, it. and it makes like a noise if I do it. You've seen me do it. I'm can sure. I tell you? Can I tell you what I I heard? What I heard that your nose actually used to be a cute little button, and you've rubbed it so hard that it's bruised <laughs> into that size. Is that true? I've made it bigger. <laughs> I I've heard that it's you, swollen because it's I, callus. It's like no. cauliflower nose. You have <laughs> you have cauliflower nose from years of abuse. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> from years of rubbing your nose hard from dust. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I that's saw, true. I think I, I'm just Italian. I don't think so. Okay, I think that you've you you have an MMA nose. I do a little bit, <laughs> but I would do like this with my little face rubbing my nose all the time, and people thought I like did a lot of coke well, in college. Well, thank God and my teachers and stuff would always be like, thought I had some kind of drug addiction because I would always be 
scratching and my nose would always be red. That's, don't you should stop doing that. I don't do it that much anymore. Yeah, that's why I was like, don't do it. Don't um, do it. Yeah, it's good to not get in that habit. Yeah, good to not. But I'm so stuck. And I would do this. It's so. Like, I just would randomly, I'd be talking to you, and I would just be squinting my nose because I'm trying to scratch it without touching it. Uh, so I developed, like, a little twitch because of allergies. What else? What else, What other excuses for unusual behavior can you make about your allergies? No, those are the only two. But this, Are you awkward, do not, are you awkward with women because of allergies? No. <laughs> I uh, am do, awkward with do women. You have, do you have issue committing because of allergies? No, 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 no. no, no, no. What, what else can the we The commitment is what not. Else? No, Maybe, I, actually, yes. You're yes, right. Great. You, Let's use I, allergies as another scapegoat. Go ahead, Rob. I'm extremely allergic to cats. There you go. He can't I cannot be in, be in a relationship with somebody that has a cat. And I've slept over places with cats, and it's like, I can't. I got to leave. <laughs> you got to leave. And it's like, I couldn't. I don't think I could seriously just, date somebody that has a cat. You're just. Uh, you're. You're not allergic enough not to come, but you're too allergic to sleep over. <laughs> you hit that right no, I... balance of allergic right there in the it's middle. Good, where it it's goes, a good. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I can't help you out. I know I came, but <laughs> I can't go down on you. It's <laughs> a great balance. The cat. It's a great balance. The cat. The cat. No, I have had, I'll from, sleep over. <laughs> sleep over. From, I'll sleep from, home. Has sometimes. saved you from spending extra time on many a pussy. But. <laughs> I just leave in the morning. It's like we all oh. need to linger. <laughs> oh, okay. So, you know what I mean. So you know, Sometimes, if there's like four cats, then I got to leave that night. Of course, one cat. Four I could cats. sleep. I could sleep there. F- four cats. You start. I you, would say two is probably the limit. Two, so two, and then you come, and then you go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Do you have a cat? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Most men. Um, they say that you come, you get the uh, the po- post come clarity. Okay, it's like the cliche. People have said that you get the post cl- come allergies. I... <laughs> <laughs> now they're there the whole time. Oh, they're there. You could just power through. <laughs> yeah, you, you nothing nothing like getting railed by Rob as he sniffles his nose and rubs his <laughs> eyes with his wrists. Oh, how was Rob in the bedroom? I don't know. He was just touching his face the whole time. <laughs> I thought he drooled on me, but I just saw a snot yeah. bubble come out of his nose. <laughs> Incredible. Wow. That's good for you. Well, yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, it sounds like allergies really hold you back. They do. It they sounds do. Like allergies In some ways, have they do. Been, uh, you're across the bear. Shout out Jesus. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Jesus. Truly, some of the inspirations for some of the worst songs ever. Jesus? Oh, yeah. What songs? They hung him on the cross. They hung you him love on the that cross. song. You love that song. I do. I don't know the song. Sick. The only song I, the only time I've ever heard this song is from your mouth. It's one of the sickest songs that ever it could be. Okay. As a Lutheran church, we didn't know what to do, so we just made they made a bunch of crappy folk songs, and we'd sit around with a guitar and they'd sing songs. Fun, but hard. I guess we would. I would when I would go to Bible camp. I went to Bible camp. I know. Um, and that's what you do. You sing songs. You just learn folks on like an acoustic guitar, and it's a lot of that. The pet, the drug of Jesus. Yeah. Well, this is app. If you're listening, I hope the people that celebrate, happy Easter. The happy Easter. That, all the people, I hope you had a beautiful Purim. There was blowing uh, fucking fireworks in my neighborhood all uh, night. Yeah. All night long. And then today's holy. Yes, it's a nice it's collection a big, of holidays. A lot of holidays this which week, which I love. Yeah, I love when there's a. Co- they're all close to each. Like which a is bunch. smart. We need to figure let's it organize. out. Organize. Yeah. Let's come on. The religions. If we're in, we ce- if we're in, in, if we're in a celebratory mood, let's just rock it out. Yeah. Let's have everybody let's have their. Let's remember thing. the true purpose of all these holidays: capitalism. <laughs> let's remember the true purpose. Let's put them together. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and so it's Easter, and I'm uh. I think that's a holiday that um, you really see who's close with their family. Okay. Because people who are close with their family celebrate Easter with their family. People who aren't, they don't. Yeah. Um, Side note, I was talking to my sister. Oh, side note, side note. And I was telling her, giving her updates about whatever, us and everything. About us? Just like the podcast, me, you, whatever. What did you say about me? No, that you you had a tough few weeks. I was uh, like, for the most part. Um. I mean, for the for sure, for, for the, the whole part, part, for the whole part, <laughs> for every part. 
<laughs> what part did you think was good? My last no, week? no, no parts good. When I tough in parts, hospital for tough two weeks? parts. Yeah, tough parts. Mom's whatever. Still in the hospital. She's getting better though. Um, every day is a fucking. Every day is uh, hopefully better. Yeah, but I was telling her that we put out a clip. How you go? Uh, why is it a red flag to love your family? Whatever, and we were talking about that, and she could not comprehend. She goes, "What do you mean, red flag? Love your family." And I'm like, I don't know. People say, she goes, what? That doesn't even make sense. I know. I love you so much. She goes, <laughs> she couldn't even comprehend. She goes, wait, people, there's, she goes, she just couldn't comprehend that, that loving your family would be, I guess that's not the best framing, but that's how we blankly said it. And a lot of people agree, said that it was a red flag. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, we did this whole thing about loving your family being a red flag. She could not at all comprehend what that even meant. I might as well have been speaking another language. You're bringing a lot of fire content about your sister. Last week with her liking to share. This week with her agreeing with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. I, no just, I'm just saying. You could see the other side. The, you could see. You could see the other side. Not that you could see it, but you. She couldn't even fathom that loving your family would be a red flag. She was like, I. She could not. I could not get. Like she just couldn't understand it. That's amazing. Um, but anyways, yes, it is. I guess you see what you're close to your family. I what are you doing for Easter? <laughs> what? You're a Charlie Rose of questions. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Out of your pocket. I don't know what that means. Why is your hand sitting in your? Why are you, Why are you doing a podcast with a hand in your pocket? I don't know, I was to, no, no reason. I've never seen someone sitting down talking to their friend with their hand in their pocket. Might be the the most uncomfortable version of a person I could ever see. You just like with your hand in your pocket, like what are you rubbing your thigh? I don't know. The Lakers coach coaches every game with both hands in his pockets, and everyone that Adderall, is a fan, please come through. We need your help. Fan. Obviously, <laughs> everyone, please, someone who has ADD medication, <laughs> throw Robbie. We need a new sponsor. Every <laughs> we need train of thought sponsor for Robbie here. Go. Every no, he just coaches every game with both hands in his pockets, and the fans are pissed about it because it's like, come on, do you can't do a good job with your hands in your pockets. He can. So then I can. If I if, if the, the, being the coach of a professional sports team requires more oomph than a podcast, I would say I would just it was just I've never seen one hand in a pocket, it, one hand in the pocket. It was almost like you're posing for a photo or something. Um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't. Are people seeing that? I guess they no, can but see. I, yeah, I, you know, you I know, you know where it is. I noticed that you're just sitting here with your hand in your pocket. I did have my hand in my pocket. Um, um, Easter, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm what saying. are you doing? I mean, it all depends what's going on with my family. Right. <laughs> I'm seeing my cousin, oh, that's which nice. is nice because we grew up going to Queens. I used to go to Queens every Easter, and we grew up going, like, I would spend Easter with my cousin and, like, our whole family. It would be, like, 30, 40, 50 people yeah. uh, all in Queens uh -huh. would celebrate Easter together. There would be, like, three or four houses that was all my family and whatever. It was a nice holiday. Um, but my aunt died, who would host it. And then we would try to see each other. Like, we still try to see each other. But it's nice that me and my cousin, at least, are like, we'll see each other on Easter. That's really beautiful. Um, yeah. So we're going to the Laker-Nets game, which is exciting. Oh. I'm going to see LeBron live for the first time. The, oh, that's really exciting. Extremely I'm, I'm, exciting. You know what? I'm very happy for you. Yeah, it'll be nice. I'm very happy for you. Um, I hope that you have a really nice time. What yeah. A, what a way to celebrate. Yeah, I'll see Darvin Ham um, with his hands in his pockets. <laughs> uh, but for me, I think that uh, I have a couple of things about Easter. One, I think, and I'm going to pro proclaim this, and people are going to be pissed about what I'm about okay. to say. Okay. People are not going to like what I'm about to say. Okay. Easter, Easter is the best candy holiday. I agree. It's better than Halloween. It's better than Christmas. Yeah. Easter is the best candy holiday. It has the best exclusives. Oh, the best drops. The best. Yeah. yeah exactly. The Easter exclusives go harder than the Halloween exclusives. And for some reason, peanut butter has partnered with Easter. You think so? I say more than, I mean, because if you're talking Christmas, what are we talking? Pep peppermints? Yes. What are we talking? Cocoa, right? That's yes. who partnered, like, Mint's partnered with Christmas. But I would still, I would even maybe go Christmas over Halloween. I agree with candy because Halloween. I like the specifics for Christmas too. Halloween doesn't do exclusive drops, really. No, they're just it's doing quantity. It, exactly, this is quality. Yes. And now I know everyone's thinking that like the first thing they think of is Peeps. 
Okay. Grow up. That is true. This is not the Great Depression. That's not what I. That's not the first thing I just thought about. Peeps for the first time. Uh, thank you. Well, this is why I like you okay. because people they go, oh, they go oh Easter has bad candy peeps. Yeah, no, I don't. I that's, don't eat peeps. This is like a cliche. Yeah. About, this is like saying our grandma eats Werther's Originals now. No, yeah, this yeah. is a cliche from thirty years ago. No, I. I mean the goat. Grandmas now play on iPads. Yeah, yeah. they don't eat Werther's Originals. Yes, they have true. giant iPads. Grandmas do love we iPads. To, we need to advance <laughs> our, our, how we make fun of people, right? Yeah, and it's not through peppermint patties in their pockets, right? It's not through peeps anymore. No, I would say that Re- Reese's does the best job for Easter. The egg. The egg is great. The egg is better than the pumpkin. The pumpkin's trying to be something. Okay. The pe- pumpkin's trying too hard. You pull it out, it doesn't even look like a freaking pumpkin. It does not. It doesn't. But it's just egg, trying to be the egg. Th- because it goes, how do I make the egg a little better? Yeah. And it came, The egg came first. The egg. What came first, the pumpkin or the egg? It's the, egg. the egg. Yeah. The egg is, I think the egg was the original Reese's, let's freaking go for it. And it knocked it out of the park. Absolutely. Also, robin eggs. That's the best. That's the best, maybe the best candy to ever exist. It's a Whopper. No. It has more, it doesn't have the crunch of a Whopper. They have, I was in Target. It's the, what is it, Nougat? I I don't even know. What is the, what is in that thing? I don't don't know what's in it. You don't want to know. But that's my favorite, that's probably my favorite candy as a kid of all time. Like, also because it's, you only have it for like a week. But that, as a kid, would be like, you wait all year for these fucking little eggs around Easter. And they are so good. And so you know good. what? I was in Target. Now they have all those little eggs in different flavors, Robbie. Really? Yeah. What are the... Oh, so, oh I got to try this out. Bro. Bro. My mom would freeze them. Oh, but that... that that'll, Freeze them. No wonder why you have veneers. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> you need them. Put them in the, ice cream. You have to freeze in Robbie. You put eggs. them in some ice cream. Have you done that? I mean, they're great. Dude, they, they, they have Maybe all- not freeze in the fridge. Fridge, not yeah. freeze. Freeze, freeze is wild. You're right. It's yeah. in the fridge, not freeze. That that now that and then put it ice cream. I think that's incredible. Yeah, because and here's the thing. So everyone thinks Easter Bunny. Cho- well, first off, they think chocolates, right? I do think that's what I think. Chocolate um, before Peeps too. I would think like a a bunny and East a and chocolate rabbit, bunny, a bunny. The Robin eggs. Those are the big two. I would say. I saw the statistic. Eighty-seven percent of people eat the ears first. Interesting. Me? Straight no. To that ass. Really? I guess the feet. Well, me, my family, we have a tradition. We buy a big bunny and then we smash it with a hammer. Really? Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, we do. We smash a bunny with a hammer, and it goes all over. It's in like a plastic bag. Yes, but the little pieces, then you could eat the little yeah, pieces. Yeah, so you have no it, idea. It shatters, it shatters, basically, yes. with one smash. Mm-hmm. And That's we cool. all take turns. It's like a pinata. Oh, that is it's cool. It's like a Jesus pin. It's like uh, like like Easter pinata. Yes. Almost, you know? Mm-hmm. So we do that. Um, but here's the thing. It's not just those chocolates. It's also the things besides cho- What are the other candies called that aren't chocolates? I don't know. What did we call those? What I do have you call no candies idea. that aren't chocolates? I don't know. Skittles and Friends? Skittles and Friends? That's the other. The S- other. It's like M&M's and Skittles. It's like Starburst. Starburst, Starburst and Friends, Starburst I guess. Starburst Buddies? What's the. What is a Sour Patch Kid? What kind of candy category yeah. is that? Gummies. I guess gummies, but you know what? It's more than just gummies. What do we call no, a sweet tart? Yeah. What do, we call, what do we call a Smarty? That's not a fucking gummy. Non-chocolate candy. But that it, we can't be chocolate and non-chocolate. It, they are so good; they deserve a name. You're gonna tell me that nerds don't deserve their own freaking sour name? candies. It, then it, there's that's just not even it. Swedish fish ain't sour. I know that's gummy. So then there, there's just not one box to put them all. in. We need a divide because you can't even say sugar because that's chocolate. Ch- chocolate is sugar. Yeah, I don't know because it's not just gummies. What are we gonna? What, what do we call an everlasting gobstopper besides delicious? Besides delicious. Besides, besides one of the best things to ever have. I yeah. Oh God! I well, used the to, best about everlasting gobstoppers is everlasting. I used you to get, get them a in pack school. for the full day. Yeah, exactly. I used to get hundred percent. They're truly the best candy yes, for school. A hundred percent. They're the most diet friendly candy too. Yeah. Because you suck that thing for hours. All that, yeah. You burn more. They don't taste that good. I burn more. I calories would say they don't suck in a gob. I agree. I would say they don't taste that good. No. They're just great because you have candy all day, and that's better than 
10 minutes. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What's better? Something that's amazing for a short period of time or something that lasts really long that's not great? Me, I would <laughs> I say this. I love I also it was like the coolest it was the coolest candy in the what Wonka movie rather, too. What would you rather inside of you? Something that you truly love for a short period of time or something something that is fine for a long period inside of time? Inside of me? And what would you rather inside of you, Rob? Here's the thing, Rob. What would you rather put inside of that body? That body of yours, what would you rather be inside Everlasting of you? You rather stoppers. something long that's not as good. Yeah, well, let, the, uh, See, now well then, he, do you ever do this where you like you have Swedish fish and you just try to you just suck every Swedish fish, and you treat them like everlasting gobstoppers? No, you've never done that. No, where you just suck on them all day and try to get them to last long. No, because Swedish fish can get you pretty far, but then you're not enjoying it the way you're not enjoying it. It's to, it's meant to be enjoyed. Some, sometimes it's meant to go in there and hit you hard. Yeah, you know what's even better what? than sucking a candy all day. Taking five Swedish fish and chewing them oh, down that in thirty is good. seconds. <laughs> a thirty second bubble <laughs> yeah. boom of, of a fucking but, a bunch of watermelon great. sour patch kids. Uh, yeah, watermelon sour patch kids are too good to suck on. Oh, no, you just no, you slam. Them I know quick. you got to slam. You yeah. slam them quick. Yeah. You go fuck, and then you just sit there the rest of the day and be like, "That was good." Your hair's messy. You're smoking a cig. You go. <laughs> you go. Wow, someone just had a fucking sesh. Yeah. <laughs> Someone just had a true sesh with a some Swedish sour patch kids. Or a, yeah. Yeah, we need to find out. If you know what those f- candies are called, tell us. I don't know. Because I'm too fat not to have that information. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like Milk Duds? Nah. Oh, I like Milk Duds for that reason. Yeah. They last a long time. You nah. can get a thing of Milk Duds at the movies. It'll last you the whole movie. I liked um, I, well, the thing that would take me slow were the Dots. The Dots. My favorite candy. Dots are good. My favorite candy. Yeah. Also... Even the M and M's at Easter time, they're coming out with fire colors. They do have a good pastel. I like pastel. Pastels have to be some of the coolest colors ever. Yes, I agree. Do they look good on my pale skin? No, I don't know. I'm sure you can make it work. I have a pastel hat. on Easter. You do have a pastel hat. I'll bust it out for Easter. Nice. I'll bust it out. Nice. I can't wait. I wore a lot of pastels in high school. Um, yeah. Hollister. Did you ever wear Hollister. preppy clothes? Nah. You missed that. Missed it. I avoided it like you avoided the it. Plague. No Hollister, no Abercrombie. Never. No Aeropostale. Never. Too cool. I was wearing. I guests. feel like did, did that go? Did anyone on Staten Island really rock yeah, that? The track kids. The track kids. Yeah. Interesting. Tra- no. What did I wear? I, I went to against all odds. I went to. Uh, I, w- I wore Echoes, Sean John, Fat Farm, Amani, Guess. Um, yeah. Nautica, maybe Tommy Hilfiger, maybe Polo. Of that course. was as. Tommy Hilfiger was as preppy as you would get. Yeah, but I didn't wear preppy. I mean, I wore... No, you wore cool. Words. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, because it was designer. Yeah. Hollister, not designer. No. Now, I feel like people in my town would mix it up. They would wear maybe like Sean John jeans with a Hollister, like a tight Hollister shirt and maybe fat farm. Like, you would see some weird combos in Cerebral because we were a little bit further out. It's like when you go to the Chinese buffet and you get <laughs> yeah. chicken nuggets with your sushi. A little and bit. Go, I thought this <laughs> yeah. <was> Chinese food. <laughs> yeah. Nah, people would be mixing a little bit more. You still haven't been to a Chinese buffet? No. I've been to a buffet. A buffet? Yeah. No. We went to a buffet I, I've together. Not, I've not. I've been to a buffet. I've been to a buffet. <laughs> the buffet is in a place. Yeah, yeah. And if it was, it would be called heaven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have not been to a Chinese buffet. Maybe we have to do that on here. All right. We might need to go to a Chinese buffet. We need to find one that... I don't know if I want to take you to one that you'd hate or that you'd love. Hopefully love. Nah, it might be just as good to hate. Hey, I just would get skeeved out if people were, like, coughing on the food. Oh, no one's coughing. Okay. No one's coughing. Um, I, My friends, well, during Easter, during COVID, we did... Uh, My friend hunt, hid Easter eggs for us, and we had to find it. That's fun. No. No. It's bit you know, looking for Easter eggs is busy work. Have you ever lost your keys and then looked all over the house and then found them? Yes, that's a better reward than time. finding an Easter. You're egg. right. You're right. That's a better, as a kid though, it's fun. Yeah, because you open it and the, and there's a Hershey Kiss inside or yeah. or a scratcher or a dollar. I mean, I'm I'm from trashy family. We had uh, lotto cards in the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, that's, that's a good a, one. That's a good one. Yeah, hundred percent. That's a good egg. That's how you know. That's. That's ex- actually the perfect way to describe the level, the economic level I'm from. 
I was thinking my about parents, this yesterday, actually. Hid, my parents hid the eggs, but what were inside of them? Win for life's. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's middle class, baby. Yeah. That's I mean, that good. True. <laughs> You're living pretty good with that a lot of. true. Like, like. One Hershey kiss some people are getting. Of course. My, my nephew well, gets you have three some in M&M's. There. Yeah. But that's I, not a lot of M&M's. But we I don't get, know if you guys know about M&M's, but that's not a lot. I don't know. I, I don't know if I could trust our fan base <laughs> yeah. to know about M&M's. But um, <laughs> I think that was like a perfect way to like know exactly how I grew up. Is yeah. that my parents hid the eggs, but what was inside may be a better life. <laughs> <laughs> I and know. you know what the sick part was? We discussed who would ca- – because we were minors, so we discussed who would cash in the lotto ticket – Based on who would who would live the longest for win for life, then. So we oh, have, if in case you want, so how we yeah, can yeah, optimize yeah. the win for life? Yeah, you have to. That it truly perfectly, perfectly encapsulates what what type of middle class I was. Yeah, for sure. They took care, but they were like, "Here, this is a beautiful life." But wouldn't it be better if we had another a bigger, yeah. bigger one, a better one? What could you imagine? I was. You think this is good? Imagine what that could bring. Yeah. Cause I so I found a lotto. Card. I cleaned my room yesterday, and I found a lotto card, and I won fifteen dollars on the scratch off. Um, and I was trying to cash it in, and I couldn't cash it in anywhere in my neighborhood. And I was thinking about that. I'm like, do rich people not play the lotto? They don't play scratch offs. They don't do scratch offs. Nowhere had scratch offs. I'm like, I grew up. That's what I you was like. They, do? they I, play the stock market, bro. Yeah. They literally say and we I was play thinking, the stock market because at a certain point, it does become a good investment. The lottery, because it's more. It, if it exceeds okay, the is, money, then the odds. You know the, what I mean? This, like, I think the numbers, there's only a certain amount of, I think that's when rich people buy it. And they'll do, like, office pools. We used to do it at J.P. Morgan. They would do office pools of when the lottery got really high. Uh, but I was thinking how nobody, there's the no fucking scratch-offs. Fair. And I went to the guy, and he's I'm like, he's like, there's no lotto people for five blocks this way. You could go sick. He, there's, like, one fucking place that has the New York lottery. I walk to it, and he's like, oh, our machine, we just got rid of it. That's why I told, like, this is a... Like scratch offs are not a, a yeah. Are they a lower class thing? Yeah, we would go. That would be a fun Friday night. I mean, yes. me and my friends would go sit in For quick check year olds and it's twenty four hour quick check, and you just buy a bunch of scratch offs. Eighteen year olds in the a parking lot in New Jersey, yeah. and then one person gets to get a bunch not of snacks. For an investment banker. <laughs> no, I know, I know, but this is yeah. I guess it's. I don't know if people in rich suburbs are doing that. Playing, just going and playing scratch offs on a Friday night. Probably not. No, they would be worried about people. Yeah. No, my dad played the lottery pretty much every week. Scratch offs. Yeah. They don't have to tell my grandma. If I went to the grocery store with her, she would um, buy me a scratch off because I would help her carry her bags. Of course. And it costs a dollar. Yeah. I got to pick which dollar. Rather than give me a dollar, she would be like, maybe you could get five. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Of course. Yeah, why wouldn't she, my mumbo? A hundred percent. I grew up I, I a lot of scratch offs. It was a fun store. activity for kids. I'd go to the grocery store with her and my dad and me. The three of us would go to A and P. I was just thinking about this the other day. Remember those coupons that you would pull oh, in yeah. the grocery store? Yes. That would say like two dollars off this. Yes. I remember getting those. One, I would take like thirty. Oh, me too. I would take Especially if you liked the design or if it was like a Pokemon exclusive cereal or something like that. And I would just and it's the magazine paper a little bit. I would bit. take a stack. Yeah. Because like it was. Yeah. Yeah. Same. And then two, <laughs> I've never like presented. And collect them like cards. Presented an argument about wanting a treat or wanting like Nabisco cookies. And I would be like, Dad, can we get Nabisco cookies? And he'd be like, no, we can't spend that much money on that. I go. Well, wait a second. Yeah. And I would bust out yeah. the thing. I would feel like such a yeah. gangster. Be like, a uh, uh, counterpoint. Like, I felt like uh, Marissa Tomei in uh, uh, My Cousin Vinny. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I just won this case. Yeah. Would they let you have it? Never. Yeah. Because it, it was about, like, one, there was a rule when I was a kid. We could never spend more than $2 on cereal. Okay. What was your go-to cereal? We, we had Rice Krispies. Yeah. We didn't eat cereal that much. Uh. I didn't eat milk. Oh, I right. liked Captain Crunch. Okay. Or Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah. Good. Yeah, they're both great. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, I feel like if there was, it was on magazine paper and it was colorful, I probably liked it as a kid. So good, man. Because you would that, would, that would just be around. Flyers. You would go into, like, 
like a clothing store and they would have a kid's book almost pamphlet of just like activities and games that you could play. Do you remember that? Of course. And yeah, I'm thinking about the grocery store because I've been staying at home with my my dad. Yeah. It's been me and my dad in the house, which has been nice. And um, I've been uh, cooking at home. And what I realized, why why a lot of people don't become good cooks or like encouraged to cook or like my food is bad is because we're taught as children make as few dishes dirty as possible. Okay. Have you ever watched a chef cook? They make a hundred dishes dirty. Our parents are encouraging us to make one dish dirty and that's all we use. One pan for everything. Uh. To make a good meal, you need to make hundreds of dishes dirty. You need to be wi- willy-nilly with getting a fork, throwing it in the sink. Another bowl, throw it in the sink. Dirty. I see. So it, your parents hold you back. It was about simplicity. The, the fir- 90s. The first step. Yeah. Well, because they do the dishes, the parents. Yeah, yeah. So the first step to being a good cook is being comfortable making tons of dishes dirty. You got to make a mess. You got to make a mess. You want to prepare multiple things. You have keep to have it separate. Bowls, stuff yeah, separate. Yeah. You have to have multiple frying pans, a bowl, a, a pot in the back, and your parents would discourage that behavior. Because I'm at home trying to cook some dinners, and my dad goes, "All right, don't use too many dishes." I go, "Oh, dad, <laughs> you'll do the dishes. I'll do the." Well, I guess they have dishes. a dishwasher. Yeah. Yeah. It's just ingrained in them? It's just ingrained. Like, don't make too many dishes dirty. Interesting. And no great meal is made from one pot. Yes. Yeah. This is something. That I don't know how to cook. I know, I know that. My you mom also know. not a great cook. Oh, I Sweet can't woman. You say that. I can't believe you say that. She would say it. No, bro. That's something you lie about. There are a few things. Oh, no, what am I going to lie? No, there's a few things in life you have my to lie My grandmothers, both of my grandmothers, Stop. incredible, incredible cooks. You got to lie about your mom being a good cook. Why would I lie? Because. It's like a joke. Ah, uh, that kills me. Her friends, like, I, like her best friend is a really good cook, and I would go over. Well, famously, my mom would make grilled cheese. She would just put. A fucking two pieces of bread and one slice of cheese in the toaster oven and then put it on top of each other. And then I would go to my friend's house and then she would make it in a pan with butter. And I was like, this is the crazy. I would be I would go to her best friend's house and eat these grilled cheeses. And my mind would be blown. And I'd be like, you you are the best chef that ever existed. And she would just be like, no, your mother just doesn't know how to make a grilled cheese. Wow, You were out here saying that. What do you mean? You gotta protect your family. No, I mean, is there no honor no more in New Jersey? No, there is. I just. I'll what am I gonna what, lie? I'll tell you what. As a New York kid, we were never saying every our single mom's person is like my mom's the best chef. Everyone said their mom's the best cook. Really? Even if their mom, even if their mom didn't even live with them, <laughs> we go. Oh, my mom. Where is she? She's probably at culinary school. She got hired. She got hired. She's working. She's working she's on a farm upstate. Like, we'd be lying about how good cooks our mom is. My grandmothers, both my grandmothers, incredible cooks. And you know, uh, but you know what we would do? Italian women. I would have people come over and eat food, and they go, and, and my mom would make fresh pesto or some shit, and I'd be like, yeah, man, that's just something light my mom made right there. Nothing heavy, you know, just something light. <laughs> this is like a basic day, you know? Like, like oh, you- normally my mom's like pulling out the stops when she wants to make you feel comfortable because we know how your mother cooks. <laughs> yeah. So it was like a, a like a competition <laughs> whose mother was the best cook. Damn. It w- I would never dis- I would never come on here. Does my is my mom is the <laughs> does, does does my grandma was my grandma a better cook? Absolutely. Okay. That's the only person that we could say was a better cook than my mother. Your grandmother on your dad's side or your mom's side? Why why are you getting specific? <laughs> why are you Because I want to know what Both of them. Both of them. Both of them. Here's Both the, of them are better than your mother. In New York, two women better than your mother in at New cooking. New York, the only person that you could say is a better cook than your mother is, is your grandmother. Is your grandmother? Okay. Everyone else, literally, everyone else isn't. Yes. Gordon Ramsay comes to my mother's house. He'll sit down. He's eating Costco uh, Costco chicken. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter, and he better show fucking respect. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't... And you're just out here throwing I, your mother under the bus, going to people's houses, being like, they make a normal grilled cheese, and you go, my mother doesn't even give us bread. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they knew that. My mom's friends knew she wasn't the best cook. She's My mother is half Italian and half, like, German-English. Uh, and ah. that's, that's the side, that's the side, I think, that uh, comes through with the cooking. 
I just saw this new thing that like, what? I mean, I. The only thing that's been getting me through these weeks is watching food videos on. Okay. Food videos online do wonders for you. You know why I think food videos online are so good? Like pre preparation videos. Preparation or what, like uh, new ideas for food. Okay. You know why I think food videos online are so good? Because you can never taste what they're showing you. So it's all still about your imagination about how good it could be. Yes. Like if you actually taste it, it wouldn't be as, it wouldn't be as exciting. But you see the flavors go in, so you can assign in your head the exact ratio yes. that would make it perfect for you. That's why it doesn't like all right, the cheese as... will be this crispy and there'll be this hint of basil yes. and this Yeah, I see what you mean. Like it always will be perfection a food video yes. because you'll never actually experience it. Like especially a really good chicken parm video. Yes, you'll never know That's the best chicken parm you'll ever have is the one in the video that you can't eat. Because you'll never know how good that it is. That Action Bronson makes. <laughs> so it always will live up to your expectation. Interesting. So if I ever had the opportunity to have Action Bronson prepare don't. chicken parm for me, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Because that's probably the best chicken parm to ever exist is the one in his video. How could you say this to me with my grandmother? All right. <laughs> We just went over this. I never I tasted your grandmother's chicken parm. And I dream about it. People ask really? me what my favorite food is. I go, my grandmother's chicken parm. My aunt really makes a really good chicken my parm. My grandmother's Sunday dinner. I still say that. And that's how I honor her to this day. Yeah. And you know what? That's how she would want to be honored. That is, yeah. That's impressive. That's how she would, and that's how I do honor her. Yeah. Someone says, what's what's the best meal? I go, my grandmother Sunday dinner is the best meal of my life. They would, yeah. And that's I, clout. That's I, They I wouldn't care about Instagram. They wouldn't care about, nah. they cared about who has the best chicken parm, who makes the best Sunday dinner. And I would say, and I would say that. that Who's got the best sauce? Because that's like a date combo. Okay. Your know. favorite food? And someone go, what's your favorite food? I go like this. I go, that's macaroni, you know, like, like fusilis with some meatballs and sausages, brajol, and then like chicken parm. My grandmother used to make it for me every Sunday. I think about it every week. That's nice. You and, want them to know what they're getting into. Yeah. And I'll say this. Just so you if know, I think date, about my grandmother once a week. If you ever date, okay. don't try to make my grandmother's food. Uh, people do that? People, uh, Multiple people I've gone out with have tried to make like, oh, you just talked about this meal, you're which is very sweet. Yeah. But, I mean, like, imagine you were like, hey, I used to be able to go see the Beatles every weekend live. And someone's like, hey, guess what? I bought an acoustic guitar. Yeah. <laughs> It's not the same. <laughs> That's a great analogy. Imagine there's no heaven. <laughs> does, this remind, for, yeah. does this remind you of the Beatles? Yeah, I'll turn <laughs> your face up a little bit. <laughs> Yesterday. Well, what's up to the game to play? <laughs> no. I go, oh, yeah, yeah. just like the, oh, I, mm, mm, just like the Beatles. Don't put me in a position where I have to fake something. No, you lie in that situation. You have too. to lie. I'm bad at lying. I don't have to lie. Have I talked about this? I don't have to lie that much anymore. In my life, really, I don't have to lie. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have. <laughs> clip it. Clip I don't it, have a job. Clip it, clip it. <laughs> I don't have a job. No, no I don't lie to my. I haven't had a girlfriend. You don't lie is you don't have a girlfriend. I don't. I haven't. Yo, you're I, But I don't. I didn't lie to my ex girlfriend. But I'm just saying, who you're do people insane. lie to? Who do people lie to? It's not people. It's you. No, I'm saying who. You you literally just say I don't have to lie anymore. I don't have a girlfriend. No, I don't. I didn't lie to my ex girlfriend. I, I don't have to. You don't have to lie. But who do people lie to? They lie at work. They lie to their significant other. They lie to their family because it's like these are people you have to see all the time. And instead of creating a little tiffy, we whatever. You're right. The only person instead, like your roommates. You, you I guess you would. Like if you, if like you're, oh, uh, I was out sick yesterday, and it's like you were actually just hung over, you whatever, and it's like if you go, oh, actually I was partying Sunday night. People might get pissed at work or be like, it would, it could be used against you or like uh, people be passive aggressive. So here's the thing. So, so you just lie and so, go, I was sick yesterday. So I guess when we know if you one day all of a sudden you have a girlfriend, we should just assume lying Rob's back. No, I don't. No, I don't lie to you. I don't lie to my roommates. I wouldn't know. That would be the people. I wouldn't know if you lied to me. I'm not really doing it. You would know, I think. No, so. yeah. What would I lie about? I'm but, not really, I'm not really looking into anything that you're telling me. True. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also great. Good, don't. No. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, you no. Say, I'm just saying you, you don't. Said last week that you uh, that you don't have a girlfriend because of me. 
No. I've been sitting with that. No, I, oh, I should not. I've been no. sitting with that. No, I, don't I, sit with I, that. I'm sitting here. Uh, no, I'm that's going, not. I don't want a girlfriend. And I'm like. I don't want a girlfriend. You want me? <laughs> no, I don't want you. I want a stability <laughs> in my life. That's what I want. Wow. Um, no, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. I thought about that, too. I'm like, I hope he doesn't take that. I, th- I hope to hold that too I mean, uh, heavily. I think that's a you problem, not a me problem. Yeah, no, it's not. I'm it's not, has I'm nothing not to do with you. you back no, no, all. no, no, not at all. I, I, you're the one texting me at one a.m. I saw your text last night. Oh, you did. Yeah, I'm not fucking answering. <laughs> yeah, that was a f- maybe if, when you see we're gonna it, you'll giggle. Com- no, we're no, gonna start a combo at no, one a.m. No, it wasn't place? a combo. I wasn't <laughs> asking you a this question. Is, I, I literally. Oh you, my god, you, I wasn't asking you a question. You text me at one in the morning last night. A and, picture and I of go, a funny comment that I somebody go, left. Here I am, his freaking girlfriend. <laughs> no. That's the first thing oh, I thought when you texted me at one a.m. last night was was this is why he doesn't need a girlfriend. No, that's not. <laughs> Look that's at not the case. Let me see your hands. Where are they? Uh, oh, they're not in the sleeves. No, a little bit, <laughs> half in the sleeves. But I was seeing how uncomfortable you are. No, no, I'm sorry I said that. No, you can text me. I'm all sorry you want. I said that. No, but I did. I you... said on the Patreon, so the people don't even know. Oh, oh, they don't even know. Last week on the <laughs> Patreon, I was like, I miss you. I was saying that I miss Sebastian, and that two weeks without seeing him, I feel the most. I feel more vulnerable to a relationship. But it's more that I just am like vulnerable like, i'm just have nothing to do i'm talking like a lot. it's a disease no it's not bad <laughs> it's beautiful a relationship could be beautiful and i hope to to get to a place where i uh feel ready for that i didn't think about it that much until you okay, texted good. me at one in the morning last and, night and then i said i i just laughed i go yeah i go this is how he's replacing a girlfriend with <laughs> me but text me one no in the no 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 that's not the case i forget what you even texted me my memory's been bad um it was a comment somebody left about the video. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I yeah. thought was true. Yeah, 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 yeah. And encapsulated our experience. No, I saw I just wasn't gonna start a combo at one in the morning. Yeah. Um but uh yeah, it doesn't matter. I just was laughing at that. Interesting. So I'm happy that you throw your mother under the bus. No, know. my mother's great. She's no, a very she supportive great. woman great. woman. I le- I used to leave my homework at home all the time in school and my mom would bring it to the school a lot. Probably really twice a, a month, I would forget my homework on my desk or like in somewhere. Pretty much at my desk in the printer, I would always forget my homework. Damn, that's twenty so times great. a year she would bring it. Yeah, wow, that's a great mom. She was a great mom, man. Very I, supportive. I didn't have that. My both my parents like would go to the city when yeah. I was in high school. No, I mean high school hopefully less, but middle school a lot. Yeah, I could see that. Um. I could see that. No, my mom was a stay-at-home mom until I went until I was a freshman in high school. That's kind of beautiful. It was nice. She definitely raised us. Yes. She was R- she was in ROTC. Have I ever told that on the podcast? No. What does that mean? Like the like army. The, she was going to the army. I your guess. mom was going to go to the army. She did army training in college. She went. She was in the ROTC for like two years, maybe. Wow. Yeah. I don't see that in her. No. You don't know my mom. <laughs> my mom is she's a yeller not, too. Oh, she is. She's a yeller. Yeah, fucking the, like the yeah, for sure. She's only been pleasant with me. Very pleasant. She's calmed down a little bit, but growing up, oh yeah, my mom. She she's got a little mouth on her for sure. It's nice. You know what? Seeing so someone calming down is a beautiful thing. It is nice. You. It's so like I haven't seen her have scream like down. that. Yeah, that is nice. I feel like I've calmed down. Yeah, I don't know. Which I feel is amazing. Like to like for some of to soften some of your qualities is such a nice thing. I think so. For sure. It's it's like think of a rock in a, in a stream rather than having hard edges that are hard that people don't want to deal with. It, it's the water smooths you out. Like yes. smooths you out to even make your like imperfections more uh, enjoyable. That is that is a nice way of looking at it. That was a beautiful analogy, Sebastian. I'm getting. <coughs> yeah, you're good. What? I'm you're good at peaceful. the analogies. Oh, yeah. I, oh, 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 peaceful. <laughs> no, I, I'm you're getting. You're creating my... your own allegories. You used to. You used to say allegories that you liked. Yeah. Now you're creating your own. Because that's the next step. That is. I mean, my, this, 335 episodes later. This podcast. We're getting Sebastian originals. Isn't for me to have a comedy career. It's for me. To become a Zambuda. Yeah, to have a book proverb, <laughs> Sebastian Canelli. 
<laughs> okay. I do I do want to say this. What um, do you want to say? A proverb, uh, something I'm thinking about. Okay. So when before this ep- after this episode comes out, will be April Fool's Day. Okay. And I have to say I have to say my piece about April Fool's Day. All right. April Fool's April Fool's Day is not a day where you could just lie and that's an April Fool's. You can't call someone up and say something horrible happened to you and then say April Fool's Day. That is not an April Fool's. I hate that. The amount of – you suck as a person if you call someone up and go, hey, I got in a car accident. I'm so sorry. I can't come to work today. April Fool's. That's not funny. No. Playing with someone's emotion to get them, like, really anxious or sad and then being like, I'm just joking, not funny. The worst – What is the – what's funny about this? You want to hurt me. Yes. That's funny. The worst people, I think, enjoy April Fool's Day. Yeah. There can be fun April Fool's. I think it can be done in a fun way, I guess. I get I, If you're the impractical jokers. Yeah. If you're Sal Volcano, it's a fun day for you. Let's go, baby. <laughs> we love Sal. If you're Sal Volcano, it's a fun day for you. He's allowed he, to do April Fool's stuff. He's allowed to do April Fool's Day. Absolutely. Okay? You know who's not? Mark from accounting. Yes. Mark from accounting that, that thinks it's funny to to wrap someone's to throw someone's lunch in the garbage and then go April Fools. Yeah, not funny. To just lie, to also people will do April Fools and just blatantly lie to you to make you feel bad, sad, and like just make you have an emotion and then go I'm joking. Lying isn't funny by itself. But April Fools, you will see how many people think lying is funny. Yeah. No. I mean that's the big joke. You will April Fool's Day is lying day. <laughs> lying and then saying I'm just kidding. And I think it's I think it's a curse of us millennials growing up learning about opposite day. Opposite day ruins so many senses of humor. <sighs> that was tough. Opposite, I'm glad I haven't thought about opposite day in a long time. Opposite opposite day became That's another April Fool's that's day. a band that's on the band joke list also. Opposite day, sarcasm in general. Somebody the other day said something sarcastic to me and i just went oh because i was just like kind of just let's move past that and i we were having a combo and then like this sarcasm was inserted and they're like that was sarcasm and i'm like i know i just don't what sure what is the response well a sarcasm is just an adult version of opposite day it is opposite day is implied opposite day it is i guess it's like oh you know we both know it's opposite i don't yes. need to say opposite yes. day if anything opposite day has ruined a generation of of people understanding how to say a joke yes it's i uh annoying ready i'll do it opposite day to you uh we shouldn't do a patreon this week opposite day <laughs> yo people would do that i know <laughs> i didn't do my homework today opposite day what yeah oh uh oh you can't come to my birthday opposite day you can <laughs> it's like wait what, what? <laughs> and that i feel like well opposite- now it's opposite opposite day God, the double opposite day. <laughs> double opposite day. The double opposite day. Well, it's opposite day on opposite day. I, opposite day does is the same energy as April Fool, Fools for adults now. Yes. And I, we just have to remember how annoying opposite day was. The kid that did opposite day is the person in your office doing April Fool's Day. Probably so, yeah. we you Don't be hurtful. If you can be silly on April Fool's Day, I'm cool with that. But don't try to hurt somebody. It's wild. I'm pregnant op- or April Fool's. Like, why are you getting this emotion? Like, why do you want to put somebody to tears? And there's going to be so many TikTokers that do stuff like that. Oh, that's so annoying. There's going to be so many. Because that's what a lot of YouTube comedy is. Yeah. Is like, oh, let's sit down and pretend that we che- he-, he cheated on you. That's so emotionally heavy. And then it'll be April Fool's. Yeah. The amount of videos that are going to come out of like, you cheated on me. Someone stole you. Someone's like carjacking you yeah i what i want to see this april fool's april fool's gone wrong okay i want to see someone uh, like a guy being like hey i cheated on you to to a woman and and the woman goes good i sucked your dad's dick (laughs) i feel like that has happened finally finally i've seen videos like that they do the double yeah i want the double yeah i think if you say you did something hard to someone and then they physically beat you up you deserve it. It's fair. And then you go, oh, I was joking, April Fools. Nah, you you, you want to play in that realm? You deserve to get your ass beat. You can beat. catch a beating. You should get, yeah. You can catch a beating on April Fools. I think, yeah. More people need to get their ass beat on April Fools. It's part, It's my least favorite holiday. Yeah. Right beside, right, right after, probably my two least favorite holidays are coming up. 
what? April Fools and Good Friday, where they killed my one and only Lord and Savior. <laughs> what is worse? For what, what? What's a what's a more painful holiday? Good Friday, where Jesus died, or okay. April Fools, where people make silly jokes. <laughs> Both kill me inside. Okay. Actually, I don't care about Good Friday. It's just a fun day. Good Friday. I for used me, to like Good Friday if we got day. off. It is a pizza day. It's a pizza party. And hopefully we would. It's like, all right, this year we get Good Friday off. Well, if we get Good Friday off, that's a good year. Because sometimes Easter break would be, uh, you know what I mean? The week yeah. up to Easter, or it would start at Good Friday yeah. and half day Thursday. Those years, you're like, I'm living great. Do you think Jesus, Jesus had any idea that? That his influence would just be kids being excited to not have to learn about about the Ottoman Empire and to get to go home and eat pizza. Do you think on Friday, one Friday a year, we get to go home and eat pizza and not learn about Sokotoa? Yeah, I mean, That's that was what it was. To me. No, it's more than that. To me? To you. I mean, I'm not religious. No. But he's around. <laughs> he's on chains. <laughs> I'm not thinking, people go, Jesus, I'm not thinking pizza party. No, but that's what Good Friday is Good today. Friday, for sure. That's what Good, Good Friday, Friday is. Good Friday is a pizza party. Good Friday is a pizza party day. We would have every Friday during Lent. A pizza party. We would not be able to eat meat. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot to give something up for Lent. And my, yeah, same. What haven't I done? Um, fucked. Great. I gave up fucking for Lent. <laughs> same. Me too, baby. <laughs> This is how no I like, sex for Lent. This is this is how I do Lent. I just hit the end of the forty days. I go. Oh, what did I do? This. <laughs> yeah. What did I? What did I not do? Oh yeah. This. No, it's annoying when somebody is like they do a sarcasm thing, and it's like they put the onus on you to laugh, and it's like I have to fake laugh or be rude in this situation. I don't do that a lot of times. It goes back to I think not lying. Like you know what I mean. Like I don't have to be fake, so yeah. I don't have to lie. I don't have to do that. Um, it's like I, and I've this done is... comedy shows where I always tell them if there's less people in the audience than on stage, the, they're the ones who have to. That's 100%. a hundred percent show for that. Yeah, and it's like pff, I get why people fake orgasm because it's just all it's like this. So at a certain point, I want it to end, <laughs> and it's just like I got a fake laugh to get out of the situation. You don't got to tell me. Well, I think only one person in this room has faked it. Faked what? Orgasm? Yeah. I have never done her. You have? Yeah. Oh, I wish there was a camera somewhere. Ew, Robbie. <laughs> not to see you. Just, just to hear. Maybe all right, maybe not a maybe a, a mic. Maybe a mic. Actually how I got my manager was he saw me. <laughs> I did get <an> act. <laughs> actually, that's how I got signed with my agents. Uh I was fucking with them and, and then I faked it and they go, wait a second, I'm an agent. <laughs> But it's a lot. Did it's you do a voiceover? <laughs> it's a lot to put on somebody to fake laugh. It was, oh, yeah. It's annoying. And it's just like, why are you doing this to me? I mean, why probably, are you doing I this to me? I probably put people in so many awkward situations. Yeah, but you're funny. So I wasn't always. Sure. I didn't know you then. <laughs> yeah, lucky. Um, I knew me then. Yeah. Yeah. I knew me then. And you were just pitching jokes. Yeah, all the time. But yeah. I would call my sister on the phone and pitch her jokes. That's sweet, and she she liked it. I like that. You just said uh, you 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 graduated to that sweet from cute. Okay, you're right. That's better. That is better. I love that. Okay. I feel like today's a progress. Thing. Okay, <laughs> today's a. Progress you're right. Thing. Cute is is not descriptive. I need to get. I need to open my arsenal a little bit with descriptive words. That's nice. Um. So and why you've been in scenarios where people have been making jokes and you have just been staring them down? Yeah. I'm not going to laugh. And what what is They that? try more. They want to get me to laugh. And then I got to fucking laugh at some point. I got to p- point out something that is funny about it. You know what I do when someone tries to make me laugh and it's not making me laugh? What? I come. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I don't I mean, real I, orgasm. I really want to <laughs> strike that for the record. No, but it's putting labor on me that I don't want to do. You're but right. The emotional labor. It is. The emotional not labor. Not emotional labor. To it's just like. Laugh. I'm too. I don't know. I'm not going to do it. What type of labor is it then? It is. I guess it's emotional. Physical labor? Mental. Mental. Mental labor. What's the difference between mental and emotional? I don't know. You tell me. So here's the thing. Why don't you just riff on top of that? That's what you would do. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about yesterday. I mean, (laughs) that's what I was thinking about when this was happening. Uh, 
what would Sebastian do? Because I'm like, that's I'm like, I, I miss hanging out with you because you never put me in these situations because you're actually funny. Well, so and I'm like, it's a bad joke. You just jump on or you make fun of them. I'm like, oh, if somebody was talking a lot during something or like we're watching a movie or whatever, you're and they keep talking. I'm like, if Sebastian was doing this, it wouldn't annoy me. So it's the person. It's not the behavior. WSD. Yeah, and then I was thinking, what would he do? In, what would you do in my scenario? And I'm like, he would just make a better joke. Robbie, here's the thing. He would li- hear their joke and make it better. Or make fun of them for making that bad joke. Let's do this. But I'm high on the couch. I'm not I'm Robbie, trying to I do, do been jokes. I've out a lot lately, yes. Okay. Right? We know that. Yeah. Um, I've been I drinking. I feel clarity. That's good. Um, Believe it or not, I haven't been at home slamming booze with my dad. Nice. That's good. He had a glass of sherry one night. That's nice. Yeah. A glass of sherry, a glass of wine. Even if you guys had a glass of wine nah. at the end of the day, that would that would be nice, I'm sure. That would be nice. No, I've been having, um, unfortunately, I've been having a bunch of Diet Cokes. Okay. Nah, whatever. Yeah. That's been my nice advice. That's nice. Um, but I want you to think, I haven't been around, so what okay. I'm going to give to you after everything's done and everything's, the dust settles from all that I'm dealing with right now, I want you to write a list of people and things that have been annoying you. Okay. And I will come with you to all those situations, and I will speak the truth to their face. Okay. I will do that. For, I. You think I'm joking? There's a lot of people. I mean, <laughs> this is gonna be a long list. Let's this is a, this is fun. I, this is. I'll go to them. Okay. And I'll wait for the thing to happen that's been annoying you. Okay. And then I'll make fun of them to, for you. Wow, this is great. This is how I could show up for you. I can show up to you in many ways. This is but great. I can go to scenarios where I. I I'm able to say the truth to someone in right to their face and make them think that we're on the same team. But then they go home and they go, oh, maybe I should change. <laughs> you are able to I do am that. The, I am the Mary Poppins. You, are, you're, you, uh, yes, you are. Just a spoonful of sugar. You have a magical power in that way. I, I, I know I could do that. Yes, you can. So you make a list of these people. That's what I miss. I miss hang. Yeah, I miss. I guess I've just. But having to deal you with a lot have of a people. Girlfriend, you don't have me. No, what that's what I miss. That's anymore. what I miss more. I shouldn't have said. I was thinking about that. That I shouldn't have said the girlfriend thing, and I should have made it more about that. That you miss hanging out with me. Yeah, I well, think make a list of what you want me to do. I was thinking about this. I think being in a group conversation uh-huh. with a bunch of people sitting around, and you are so bored at the conversations that's happening. I think that is the most lonely place on earth. Loneliness isn't in an empty room, Rob. I, I that's what I'm realizing. Loneliness is not a, loneliness is a, is with a It's when you're people. with exactly when yeah. there's a lot of people and you just feel like I don't connect to any of this right now. I never felt more alone than when I was with someone. That is what not no and I love my friends and like a lot of time but <laughs> I lo- I don't want anyone to, like friends. my close they, it's a lot of times like maybe acquaintances. Yes. Or you're just like, "All right, we're not besties we're not very close friends because when you're connecting that's the least alone i would say i feel yeah. is when i'm with a really close friend and we're connecting but when you're with people who are like kind of ish friends i guess or barely you could kind of know each other or friends of a friend yeah and then like a lot of times i would say friends of a friend and then they start talking and then you're like oh i don't care about this they kind of this is what's going on and you're just kind of standing there that's the most lonely that i think i feel ever <laughs> So what makes a good situation hanging out with friends? What, what makes a good- Sebastian Canelli? No, no. My other friend, friends that I like, people that I connect with, people that are funny. People that are funny. Like if you're going to pitch jokes, they got to be good jokes. Bad jokes to me makes me feel lonely. I think what it is is talk. I think when I feel loneliest is when people are talking about inside stuff that I don't know about. Yes, or sometimes that. Or like, yeah, that. That makes me feel the most like. But I, I think even more so when everyone's laughing at something that I'm like, that's not funny at all. Yeah, that's sad. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but that's okay. I'm like, Everyone's what? allowed sense of humor. No, that's I know, different. for sure, for sure. And also people have inside jokes. Here's the thing. Sometimes they're, 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 they've that's had that tough. conversation. That's before. tough. And they're not a group of people with a really bad inside joke where they just repeat. We've talked about that. They just repeat something over and over again. Well, people aren't. It's not that people aren't funny. They're bad at articulating what makes something funny. Sure. I Brian Regan. I love him. And he goes, he goes, the hardest part about doing comedy is the setup, not the punchline. Yes. 
and people don't know how to set stuff up. They don't give you the necessary context to make things funny. Yeah. So inside jokes can be funny to you if someone just fucking explained it. Yeah. And took their time and didn't rush through it. Yeah. Because then even if someone does in those group settings want to explain to you what's funny, they rush through the funny parts so you don't actually enjoy it. Yeah, because they, they are going to laugh. Yes. yes. They know they have a laugh at the punchline because all their friends know the context. Yeah. But what about little old me? No, I, yeah, I agree. It yeah, is. That's when you show up, Rob. What? And you bring some excitement. To I do group. bring excitement. What do you do? So the group chat's going slow. Here's the thing. Okay, I'm talking. I go. I'll list. get something that everybody yeah, could talk wait, about. You, you, I want you to just throw throw down a topic. I want to hear what you do. I have no topics right now. But this is the thing. You can't complain. But I have, and have topics. Nothing. I have topics. You can't complain and have nothing. Ready? Here's the thing. And I just I don't know if I I can't I just can't buy lilies anymore just because they just droop all over the place. Uh oh, me, Miss Droopy. <laughs> um, all right. You want to know my recent story that I've been telling people? Just chime in with something. That's how you would chime in? No. Like okay. lilies, the lily thing. Yeah, I would let that die and just reset, re- reestablish my own. Okay, let's hear you do that then. Ready? Um, oh, my God. And, of course, I go to make pasta. The water birds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Um, you think so? Yeah. Thanks. So I did a really horrible job flirting recently. Do you guys good at flirting? Do you think you're good at flirting? I'm sorry. We're a group of nuns and married couples. <laughs> this is why I feel so fucking lonely. <laughs> I gotta leave. I'm sorry. Uh, here's 20 bucks. <laughs> here's my thing. But I will. I mean, I try to come to group settings with topics. We ha- we do a lot of topics here. Sometimes I'm like, I hope they don't listen to the podcast, my close friends, so I could just reuse talking Jesus, points Jesus Rob you can't be not reused but I have stories I mean I don't I actually don't tell a lot of stories that happen to me in real life on the pod I've been telling more on the Patreon but yeah. cause it's embarrassing it's not that it's embarrassing it's just showing up to group settings being like well, hey what do you think about a April Fool's jokes? no you're right sometimes you might though before we talk about it you might bring it up nah. Yeah. I've seen you come with some premises. Yeah, but I'm not really setting. doing I'm not seeing no one really. Yeah, right I'll now. I'll tell you this. No. I'm seeing no one. I know, I know, I know, I know. I You're see seeing no one right now. No one. I know, I know. My life is nothing. I know. Recently. Rec- recently I see absolutely no one. Yeah. You say that you don't spend time with me, you are the time. No, I, I know, I know, I know. Which is insane. I know. That is insane. So all these thoughts I have, they don't know. I talk to my sister. Yeah. And my father. Yeah. They get some of the and then thoughts. I, other, I text some people. Do they get some thoughts? Your sister and your father. Nah, not these. Not these? No April Fool's? No, none of that? The, anything I've talked about today, they haven't heard. Yeah. Maybe my dad has heard me talk about, like, never disrespect your mother's food. Okay. Yeah. But that's like a... That's something that's just talks. that has nothing to do with no. comedy. <laughs> that's not comedic no to comedic your father. No, life. for sure. No. That's not comedic. I agree. Um, but no, I try to come with certain things or like I just have story. I don't know. I have stories. You know what you do? What? Especially yeah. I haven't seen people in a little bit. You bring something up about someone else. Yeah, that's always good. People like tea, but I have my own not the people. Tea. What do you mean? Bring something up about someone else? Like someone be be like. You know, I can't wait for you to go to that Laker game this weekend. Are, are you, like, preparing? Are you, like, listening to Extra Braun this oh, week? Or like, yeah, yeah. That's Because you can control. When you're asking the questions, you can kind of control how the combo goes. Yeah. I do agree with that. I'll try to get a, a good question, like a juicy question for maybe the whole group. It's like, all right, do you consider yourself flirty? Well, here's the or thing. Or something like that. There's a line between it feeling natural and you doing conversation starters, Rob. I think I can make it feel natural. Do you feel flirty? Feel almost feels like no. I st- I'll, I have a story about myself. I'm like oh, I, okay. this thing happened to me this week, and then maybe we get do a question, and then we pause for questions. I think I do a good job in a group setting for the most part. No, I know. I'm just wondering. Um, what's but, the, what's the least funny joke that someone's told you, or the the most dead air that you've gotten in a group setting lately? I can't talk about it. It's too too quickly. I told you right before the podcast. <laughs> I told you right before the podcast. And they might listen. I have no idea. But you just yeah. I'll tell you soon. I mean, I'll tell the people soon. 
I just need to let it breathe. Um, but I want to tell you the story before we leave. Uh, the other day, okay, I tried to flirt, oh. which I think I'm pretty flirty, and I think I'm okay. I can be good at flirting. I think people call me flirty all the time. Flirty, flirty, flirty. I'm very flirty. Flirty energy. Would you agree? Um, I don't know. You don't know. I've been thinking about that a lot. And if you're know. flirty or if I'm flirty, if you're flirty. Okay. I don't, I don't Some know. people think I'm very flirty. I think that you're flighty, which equates to flirty. I kind of agree. I think I'm friendly. I think and you're I'm friendly flighty. and flighty. Like my friends on the trivia team were like, "Oh, we just assume you go off and flirt." No. And I'm like, I don't think I'm. Um, I talk. I'll ask somebody their name. I'll like maybe have a little convo, I but that's flirty, I guess. I think you're personable and kind of an airhead out and about, which equates to flirty. I kind of agree. I know. I think that you're like a combination that like all of a sudden you taste like peanut butter when you're actually not. <laughs> Ew, that's so gross. <laughs> a surprise. <laughs> when something tastes like something it's not, that skis me out a little bit. Right. Well, that's what you. Well, I'm. am sorry for. The I'm skeeved out. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I do do a bad job at flirting. I would say a lot. Yeah, I would agree. Where like a lot of dead air or like a lot. I mumble sometimes. I would say this. What? If you were, if your flirting was in my body, I would be a virgin. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> you think so? I do. I do. I think so. <laughs> okay. I think that you. You. Uh, so, like an athlete that's that's Shaq never had to work on his free throws. Okay. Continue. Okay. I see the analogy. Um this is gonna be a bad story now. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, this we, is gonna we be don't a bad story. <laughs> no, 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 we can, we can, we can. So I'm talk I this somebody who I find cute. Nice. Um I'm talking to in a loud in a place that's hard to hear, we'll say, whatever. A lot of it. Hard to hear. So I'm like kind of mumbling, not doing the best, missing each other a little bit. And whatever. I'm like in a position. I'm sitting in a chair, which I'm like, all right, not in a good flirting position. So Optimal flirting position. Go. Optimal flirting position. Uh, standing up. And what are they? Maybe leaning on something. Leaning. Leaning on a light post? Something. Something. A, a little post? lead. Like right here is is like... This is good right here. No, this feels like an interrogation. <laughs> but this is a good flirting position. Like, if we're out to dinner, we're on a date, this is a good, I'm like, Sitting across page. from the table is not a good flirting position. You don't think so? No. Side I think this side. is. Side to side's cute. Yeah, Sitting side across, side. if this table was half the width, it would be good flirting. I Because we, we would touch more. I guess. If our legs were touching. Yeah. But then we would touch it. The flirting way, I, I'm not a touchy flirter. But here's the thing. I sit here and I sometimes... I feel like we're in a police interrogation. A little bit, yeah. There's bright lights. Like, that makes it less flirty. Sure. I would say that, like, you leaning on something and them standing in front of you. Sure. Go ahead. So That's you, kind of, exactly. That's, yeah. Worst flirting position. The I fucking guess. lifeguard chair that I'm at. <laughs> in the, and it's loud as hell. You can't hear anything. I guess on a there, track bell is there, pretty bad, too. On yeah. an exercise ball. And the gym is a horrible flirting place. No, it's not a good flirting place. Okay. You got to be loud, whatever. So you're on a lifeguard chair. No, flirting. no, 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 no. We can't you're be not. sure. We can't oh, be sure. We can't be sure. We can't be sure where I'm trying to flirt. We can't be sure. We can't be sure. But definitely S trying to flirt. No. Oh, okay. It's not down the shore. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to flirt and I'm talking to this woman and we're like, it's going better. I'm, I'm like able to project and I'm talking now and we're connecting on some things got a little few laughs or whatever and then she starts telling me hope she didn't feel pressure to laugh i hope so too <laughs> i hope so too after you talk about how much i don't think she did because pressure. in the beginning in the beginning there was no laughing so maybe she maybe she felt pressure oh, no. that would be my worst nightmare okay i'm so sorry i'm so that, sorry that's that's a real that's a possibility especially they're like oh he has a podcast. He's trying to do his comedy show. Like, I think he's trying to be funny there. I should laugh. I hope they don't. Don't laugh. Ooh. Don't fake laugh. Ooh, yeah. Just don't. I can handle the silence. That's what people need to know. Is I can handle awkward silence if you don't laugh. And I will learn. I will adjust. Um, you, anyways. You do a great job of filling the silence. I do? No, I don't. Yeah, you do. You think so? Yeah. Sometimes I let it sit and I go. And I think. 
about what I'm going to say next, which is awkward. That's nice. That feels like AI that hasn't been completed. That's what I feel like sometimes. <laughs> I think that's what people, I think that's how I process sometimes. You might be AI. No, I'm not AI. You might be. No, that's, if, if that's so mean. Is that mean? I'm, that's so boring. Somebody call you AI, that's boring as hell. I'm so sorry. Damn, you think I'm AI? When you stare off into the distance and, go, and ponder what your next thought will be. Yeah, no, AI would have something, I feel like. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe not. Anyway, so they were talking, she told me about Instagram ads that she gets. She gets Instagram ads uh, of the, the gym that we both attend and work at. Um, oh, so she works there too. For the parent company. Nice. But. Okay, we're get on LinkedIn we're deep people. we're deep get into people, the episode we're, we're deep we, into we, the we episode might, so i'm talking about out. it whatever um so whatever i'm trying to flirt a little bit just like i don't know want her to like me it is what it is and she's i'm like oh that's so wholesome that you just get like ads to go to the gym i get ads that are wild which i do get so many instagram ads that are wild i feel like we've brought up a lot of times like wild instagram ads and just like the shit i see on instagram is wild so She's like, what ads do you get? Which is the obvious next question. Mm -hmm. And I was not ready for that question. Oh. You talk about the setup and the punchline. I, I, I was not ready to come with a nice punchline. And so I immediately go, I'm like, you know that picture of Sydney Sweeney when she's on Hot Ones where she's like looking in admiration of something? Mm -hmm. And she's like, no. And already I could tell she's kind of like, why is he talking about Sydney Sweeney? Yeah. Like, why is he getting ads about Sydney Sweeney? Mm -hmm. Which is, I would say, a red flag. Nah. You can't control that. No, you can't control it. Also, they just know you're a man of a certain age. Yeah, but mm -hmm. Sydney Sweeney, yeah, you don't exactly. You need to be bringing it up to her. No, I don't need to be bringing it up. I'm trying to be flirty place. right yes. now, and now I'm bringing up Sydney Sweeney. No, you don't need to be doing that. Um, you should go, Sydney who? Yeah. You should see it. What if, I, I, I've i never heard of any of you. No. One, what is that? <laughs> so it's Sydney Sweeney, and I'm like, I say that. She doesn't know that. Not laughing. And then I'm like, oh, there's this ad. It's so crazy. And it's like your girlfriend's face when she sees you've been making some extra money on the side donating sperm. And she doesn't laugh. And she just goes, what are you Googling? Oh my and I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm like, I swear I've never. Oh my I'm thinking this is going to be funny. I think this is a funny ad. I see the ad all the time. It's hilarious. I'm just like, oh, who the hell? Who is looking at an ad and being like, I could get a girlfriend like Sydney Sweeney if I just jerk off in a cup and spread my seed. So now I'm doing this. I'm saying this. And I'm just like explaining why I think it's funny. She does not think it's funny. And she's just going, she just goes, it's okay. Also, we like, I don't know. I know. She doesn't know me like that. She doesn't know me well. Oh, this is wrong for so many this reasons. Is, I know. She doesn't know me well. I mean, it's not perfect. We don't work directly together at all. Okay. But she doesn't know me and know that I'm not donating sperm a lot. So I'm just going, I swear, I'm not donating sperm ever. ever. I've never done it's that. I know. Then lot. I go, I don't judge people who do. I know. So I have some friends that have done it, which also don't need to say. No. And then I'm, yeah, it was, it was not good. What happened after that? What happened after that? After I just go, I think I just get pushed this ad because I'm broken. I'm 30 and they just are trying to. That's great. To take the whole deep. <laughs> yeah. I just couldn't get out. And what did she say then? I, she was not laugh. It was just kind of like me talking. And was that the end of the convo? No. Uh, I think I probably went. Well, it's cool that you went to the, the pool. I think I just probably like tried to get it back to the old convo. And um, it didn't work well. No. I mean, she said, maybe I'll text you when she left. This is what I'm talking about with Shaq. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about I with know. Shaq. I definitely am privileged in that way. This is it was not charming. She didn't think it was charming. She didn't think it was funny. This is unbelievable. And I told this other kid I work with, you should and I start telling him the story. I start telling him the story. You should only hang out in places where you cannot communicate. <laughs> I start telling this kid the story, and as soon as I say Sydney Sweeney, he knows the ad, and he starts dying laughing. He goes, bro, why the fuck would you bring that up? I don't know why, man. All these guys know the ad. Yeah, everyone, everyone get it's like yeah, it's like a cliche. And like, nobody's talking. Probably if you're in a certain age range, you get it. It's funny. It's Not a, a crazy ad. A woman, I know. I should. With. I know. It's bad. I did a bad job. But it is a funny ad. Who is watching that? It's like who is falling for that? That's what I'm saying. And then she immediately just thinks I'm falling for that. And I'm like, this is so funny that they think they could get guys with this, and that's what she's her impression Maybe is. You are. 
equating me too much with what it would be like to have a girlfriend because that would be a fun thing to bring up to me. No, I know. <laughs> no. Yeah, I guess my roommates or like something. It's the, which even somebody that you're seeing for a little bit, I think you could say this is so crazy. Like who yeah, would fall? Once you have a rapport. Any kind of context. Once they know who you this are. This is someone who. Who knows nothing about you. Yeah. We've met in person three times. And most, it's like maybe 20 total minutes of talking. Let's start calling you the Winklevoss twins. Bad. Why they jerk off in cups? No, they they, they just take what they don't deserve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have hot privilege, I'm sure. Oh, hot privilege. I, was I hinting at that? I guess. I don't know. Am I hot? I don't know. Cute privilege? Cute privilege. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I don't know. If, I don't think it went well. No, that doesn't sound too good, man. Like, I, I strike out. I fumbled. I fumbled a lot of situations. I know. So, I'm, I'm, I'm aware. Yeah. I would say it goes downhill when you start. It's probably the peak when it's the loudest and then slowly gets a little worse. And until the, the ultimate bottom is when you're writing them books about you. <laughs> the ultimate low uh, it's is bad. when you start writing the book books is bad. about you. The book is bad. But anyways, March 30th, come out Saturday. Yeah, beautiful. If you want um, to see Rob live, go. Uh, it's uh, very fun. See that show March 30th. And, uh, Robbie, we should head over to the Patreon. I'll, I'll talk about some other stuff over there that I want to share. Yeah, I have, I have an even you. more wild situation um, that I would say I have fum- not fumbled, but just like even more wild behavior. Yeah. Um, well, there we go, Robbie. I was just out here making a fool of himself. Uh, yeah, just doing for poorly. Your entertainment. Poorly. Uh, not really for your entertainment. I was not. I was genuinely trying. I think I wanted to flirt. Like, there's very few times where I'm like, I want to be intentional about trying to get this person to, like, have a little crush on me. Well, we'll say over there. All right, bye. Beautiful. Uh, all right, so go check out the Patreon if you want. Uh, we're going to hop over there now. Uh, we appreciate your support. Please keep sharing the pod we like uh tell us tell a friend about that that truly means the world to us all right robbie hit the music